Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and returning to the old world. And thank you very much for joining me on the last of the catch-ups for a tale of many gamers. This month we'll be talking through our experience at our first Warhammer the Old World tournament, hosted by Incursion Events, aka Incursion Tactics. A big thank you to Luke for organising the event. It was great fun, as you'll hear shortly. We'll also be talking about our plans for the rest of the year when it comes to Warhammer. And there's also some ideas around some videos which may or may not appear on the channel further down the line. Bring enough waffle from me. Let's have a look at the catch up. All right, good evening, chaps. Thank you very much for joining me today for the last of our catch ups for the tale of many gamers. It's certainly been, from my experience, at least quite an interesting six months of throwing stuff together and probably the most intensively that I've built an army, well, ever, um, to get it. <laughs> painted on the tabletop, tested and all the rest of it. Um, don't know how you guys have got on. We'll find out in due course. So for those of you who are watching the video on YouTube, hello. And thank you very much for joining us on Return to the Old World. As a quick note, if you enjoyed this series and perhaps other videos on all things one of the Old World, do consider liking, subscribing and all that stuff. It is the best way of supporting small channels such as this one and on the subject of supporting small channels i will introduce the participants we have available for the call today i will start on the basis of small channels luke you have welcome thanks for dropping by and you also have your own channel if you maybe you want to just quickly introduce that quick and um, quickly yeah thank you uh, i've got a uh, 40k themed tactics channel Incursion Tactics, similarly lane to the, the events that I run. Uh, I also run Warhammer 40k and Old World events. Uh, the topic of, of the show being the, the Old World event that we uh, all attended. And yeah, uh, check out Incursion Tactics to all sorts of discussions around 40k, how to engage with uh, the game in a more meaningful and, and fun way, not just the typical kind of unit reviews and this is the best faction and that's how you should be doing this, that and the other, but looking at the game in a more tactical and holistic way that's what i'm all about on that on that channel so yeah check that out if you're interested in 40k tactics okay going next up we've got rob on the call so welcome to rob um you obviously don't have your own channel but i think you've appeared on quite a few of luke's videos and you've also some of uh, paul's stuff as well yeah I'm, I'm all over the place uh just up to no good really so um yeah, I'm here. I'm looking forward to this final one. Maybe I've got some interesting news, I guess. We'll get back to that. Oh, should look forward to that. And last, but by absolutely no means least, Tim. Um, again, thank you for, for stopping by. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I also don't have a channel, but I think you'll see me on Epic Fail as well in the near future. Now I have a full painted Old World Army. I should be on the stream there. And also I've got a grudge match to sell in 40k that's going to get streamed so Ooh, maybe we'll maybe we'll see me on there exciting stuff uh, and without wanting to steal too much of your thunder i think you were on the stream for the tournament we were at the other weekend oh yeah it was first game yeah so i look forward to hearing about that so today we're going to be chatting through our final month um stuff we did in june for the tale of many gamers project which was the build-up to Luke's event in Lansu, which was a really interesting experience. Now, I know Rob sadly wasn't able to make it on the day, so we've actually got really experiences of that event from three different, technically four different standpoints. Um, myself and Tim were there taking part. Tim, as you've just heard on the stream for one of the games, so that would be quite a different experience, I think, to just a regular matchup. And Luke was obviously the organiser, and then Rob was able to participate in the chat to the live stream, so viewed it from a slightly different angle um, to those of us who were there. So I'm going to just, just start and see what I can see in my top corner and then work my way around. Uh, so Tim, 
How's your month been? And how did you find the event? Uh, my month's been great. I really, really value having the pressure to finish an army in time for an event. I did, I, I must have painted 75% of my army in like three weeks um, to get it ready for this event. Um, it was impressive yeah, seeing so, your progress. Yeah, but like, yeah, just like everything went from being either unpainted or like just base coated to being done in like three weeks. Uh, and it turns out you can do it if you have to. So, yeah, really good <laughs> oh, hobby yeah. month for me. I even went the extra mile and painted up a couple 3D printed uh, familiars for my wizards because they have the familiar. Nice. Um, you don't need a model, but I was like, I bought these little models. They're cute. A little like goblin carrying a spell book on his back. Um, so I'm glad I had the time for that. Um, yeah, the event was great. Um, just really good vibes and also good games that I got to play. I got to, I had one, the first game on stream was against the, basically the meme list, like the uh, screaming vampire count list with two dragons in it. Um, and I think being on stream does change the experience slightly because I knew in my heart that the, the way to play against that game, list was deny it points like hide from it run away from it and just pew things off with my wizard but i was like i'm on stream it's the first game of the stream i'm gonna just push stuff up the board and give people like something to watch <laughs> because yeah. i was never gonna win the tournament so i don't really care about losing the game so i wanted to make the game entertaining more than try to win it um so i did that and of course my hell cannon blew up turn one um which was entertaining, as promised. I knew it would. Uh, so that was great. I lost that game pretty tidily. I did make a couple blunders, but as I said, I wasn't really playing to win. Um, my second game was a mirror match against Warriors of Chaos. Um, that that was. I voted for that opponent as my the best sport that I played against because, despite. I, I took that. I took a twenty nil victory in that game. I just tabled him and basically didn't lose a single unit. So, and on top of that, I think he rolled perils on his cast three or four times throughout the game. So to have such bad luck and like quite a bad matchup for him, and still being like a fun, high spirited opponent to play against, I was just very impressed by him. Um, what made it a bad matchup? Um, so it was a mirror match, but surely you had different things, right? Yeah, um, he had very few units. He had no chaff, um, and I have quite a lot of chaff. Um, I have 10 skirmishing marauders that I can give fly 12 to get them in the way. I've got two units of dogs in marching column. I can get them in the way. And then I have two units of ogres. They're like 120 points, movement six, three wound things. So I also don't mind pushing them up the board and getting in the way of stuff. Um, so while I and he's got two big blocks of warriors, a chariot, a chimera, and a chaos lord on the dragon. So what I was able to do is just block the chimera, block the chariot, block the dragon, uh, while I used my wizard to just shoot his warriors, warriors to death, basically. Um, and then eventually was able to tie up the dragon with my warriors and actually kill it in combat with um nice. i've got a level four sorcerer in there with one half decent assailment spell and an ogre blade um and that was able to take the dragon down wow yeah and then i could i was freed up to just shoot everything else with my the, honestly battle magic level four battle magic with a Ruby Ring of Ruin and Laura Zinch, you've got three magic missiles and you've got a vortex that does that moves around the board doing <coughs> wounds. Nice. And between that, I was just like clearing everything off the board. Um, yeah, and then my third game was another loss. So I went one, two in the end um, against dwarves. Um, I basically killed all of his chaff with my wizard again. Battle magic, very good. Um, and I made the mistake of thinking, oh, it's dwarves. If I put my big unit of chaos warriors into one of his big units of 
melee things are win. But no, it was like quite a melee text dwarf list, which I wasn't expecting because I don't know the dwarf book very well. So um, even though I killed more units than he did, he killed more points than I did and and took a comfortable victory. Um, yeah. So that was that was the majority of my experience. Um, I have to big myself up here. I did win Best Painted Army, which is the whole reason. That's hey. the thing I'm gunning for. I'm very, very proud of myself. Um, I've got the, got the lovely certificate here. Um, yeah, like I said in the last call, I was going to bring the Hell Cannon, even though it's not absolutely terrible, because it's a, a cool centerpiece conversion that I've done, and that I really wanted to win Best Army more than I wanted to win anything else. So yeah. I'm glad, glad I did that. Well done. Yeah. That's what Rob, I, I think you said this before, Rob, like know what you want out of a tournament. <laughs> And that's what I wanted. So I feel good about that. Yeah. I no, think you've got the best stream moment as well, to be honest, mate. Because that cannon exploding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was like everyone. I think moments before, Paul's like, he's firing the cannon. We all know this is how it's going to go. And then bang. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> yeah. And I said on stream, I was like, don't roll a one here, Tim. And then there it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that's the joy of this game as well. Like, there's no re-rolls. There's lots of rules that can make things happen that you didn't intend, and it's funny. So I'm glad I provided some amusement to the, to the stream. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Yeah, so, yeah I think we um, we share one opponent in common then, Tim. So going back to the call we had last time round when we were talking about it, I was going into this thinking... I'd quite like to win one game, and if I win one game, I'm happy. Um, so my first opponent was in stand on standard battle um, was against Demons of Corn. Um, so I was very much of the view this game is going to go one of two ways: either I'm going to get lots of damage in turn one, turn two with all my artillery, or he's going to be on me, and then that's that's you know good night Vienna. Um, and sadly, it was the case that. He was all over me. One of my flanks just collapsed horribly when my shooting didn't do as much damage as I'd like. Um, it, it was a good game, but it was was very one-sided. So I got an absolute walloping on that one and lost that one 20-0. Um, you, you had some unfortunate misfires as well. Didn't yeah, you? I did. I managed to roll a triple misfire on my Hellblaster and follow it up with a miscast from my Wizard Lord. Um, so that was a very good turn that I had shooting wise. <laughs> Although to be fair, the triple misfire did mean that my Hellblaster blew up so spectacularly it did thirty shots, um, nice. most of which then missed. So oh. yeah, you know, is what it is. Um, <laughs> game two for my really diverse range of opponents. I had Demons of Chaos again, but this time Slanesh. That was the deployment I was most worried about because you start so much closer together. It was the break test, break point one. Um, yeah, that was a really interesting game. Again, really good fun. Um, my force broke. I think I was six model countdown from breaking my opponent. Mm -hmm. So there was an awful lot removed from the table. The problem was the stuff I'd taken out was the low points value things, whereas the stuff he'd taken out from me was the high value points things. So it did turn out again to be a big, big lot. I think that was a 20 nil loss as well. But uh, I think unlike some other game systems, when you're on a receiving end of a defeat like that, it didn't feel anything like as big a loss as the scoreboard said it was. Um, there were a lot of moments when it was a lot closer um, and I had the slightly unusual man of the match when it came to combat actually for the first two games my man of the match for combat was my wizard lord who had a bit of a knack of walking in throwing knuckles and things just died um, and he was about the only one that killed anything on a reliable basis a guy with two attacks at strength three uh, helped by his, assa his assailment spell but he's basically going in punching demons to death when no one else could manage it. So that was quite amusing. Uh, third game was against the Warrior of Chaos list that Tim just described. So Chimera, Chariot, 
two warrior blocks, unkillable lord on a dragon that kept dying, and a level four. So this was the mountain pass scenario. Um, again, all credit to to the guy. He was really chipper and all the way through it, despite just having been smashed by Tim and then having to basically march down a valley into a load of gunfire um, and watching his units slowly disintegrate. Um, the one time I've ever had the dragon slaying sword go off was when my general charged into his chimera and just booped it in one shot. Nice. Um, and I managed to tie up his dragon with one of my units of knights long enough for my general and his knights to then come turn around, go plowing into its back res it out, watch that magic double six that's not really rollable because he's not got a BSB anywhere, kick in and then run down the dragon as it flees. Um, oh. Yeah, it was it was pretty... It was one of those games that... It doesn't feel particularly great to win that way because it was just so... one. It was a one-sided beatdown. Um, he took, what, half a dozen models off at most, I think. So none of my units lost any points. Um, it was pretty nasty, um, but yeah, fair play to him. He played a, as as well as he probably could have done in that scenario and kept his kept smiling. Um, he was my my tip for sportsman as well, actually. Um, so he got at least two votes. Or weirdly, I did manage to come out of it with best sports, so uh, I was a bit surprised by that, knowing that he had at least two votes in his favour. So it must have been pretty close. Yeah, it was a. Yeah. He was. I think it was him and one other person on two. I can't remember who that person was, but yeah. It was also very close with the painting as well. So um, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about it because lots of people have sort of gone by the end of the day anyway. So you had the the. It was basically a two horse race with the painting, the Chaos, uh, what are they called? The Chaos Dwarf list. I don't know if either of you saw that. Yeah, yeah um, I, I voted for that. I really like that army. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So you uh, <laughs> you almost uh, almost voted yourself out of, uh, <laughs> out of the running. Mm-hmm. You've got, you got to pick something slightly. I should have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, sort of yeah. but um, it was it was into those two. On, and again, with the, the, the sporting, it was very close. But this, this is. It's really good because it was it from my perspective it it just meant that there was a lot of i can't remember which one of you said it now but just good vibes i felt like there was good vibes throughout the whole event yeah. and it's nice to hear that kind of parroted back to me because it was it was the yeah it was just really nice and, and yeah lots of lots of people wanting to vote for, for sporting lots of people on on at least one vote which was you don't always see it which is good yeah, and you you said to me at the end, oh, I it was I allocated too long for the games. There's too much time, but it was actually really nice to have to be able to relax between games. Um, I had a nice sit outside this pool in the sun and just chatted Warhammer for an, about an hour. So that was really nice. Yeah, it's it a is, good day. It is nice to have that. I think the the sad reality is. Um, it's, if people are considering traveling for an event, if you shave off half, like aggressively half an hour off per round, then that may, it makes a big difference to the finish time because it is yeah. nice to have a little bit of a, a breather. And I'll always try to factor in a five, 10 minute break so you can get some air or whatever. But, but yeah, some people there, <laughs> there's just two people that arrived together and one of them's phone wasn't working and then it suddenly woke up and he goes oh i've got my wife ringing me and i've got your wife ringing me at the same time who do i answer first i was like the answer's not forthcoming then you know <laughs> yeah. your wife 100 percent of the time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um so uh i think people were uh were feeling it by the end but i think there was again it speaks to the kind of casual more casual vibe i think there was a lot more people there a lot less used to being at events for a lengthy period of time throughout compared to the 40k crowd that are regularly there they're there all day they're locked in they're fine um but yeah it's all good yeah i have to say at the end of my the my third game playing 40k at a gt on day one 
I was starting to get a little bit grumpy. I was just like, <laughs> I'd like to sit down now. Yes. Um, but this event, I don't know why, I was just like, just in a good mood the whole time. It's not like I was winning or anything. Like, um, yeah, maybe it was the nicer weather, longer breaks, I don't know. But I think we're still in a bit of a honeymoon period with this game. I, 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 I said a lot of people, I said it on the build up to it, I said my assumption is, and it played out, that people are just happy to be there. They're just happy to be playing this mm. game again. And it's just really nice. So I think there's that whole general kind of feeling of just just enjoying it. I mean, I had had questions. People were asking me things like, "Oh, does the big un bonus for orcs, orc biggins, does that apply to the boar?" It's just like, no. And I thought the way they were asking me was they were trying to game it. He goes, "No, no, no that's fine. That's how I want to play it. I just make it sure, okay. just happy." I like, wasn't actually arguing me. Just want to double check. You don't always get that vibe in other game systems. So it's uh, it's just great. It's just nice. It's just chilled. Yeah. Like there was that Wood Elf player, mm. 100% 80s and 90s metal miniatures. I mean, I mean, to be fair, you can't buy plastic Wood Elves right now. But still, you wouldn't see, no one's bringing their nut metal miniatures to Warhammer 40k tournaments, really. Not that I've seen. Because um, everyone's chasing the meta and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very rarely do you see that. So that was really nice to see. I thought it was an interesting point you made about the fatigue point, though, Tim. Um, so I definitely found that I felt absolutely fine until sort of sat down at the end of game three when I suddenly went, actually, I feel quite tired. And by the time I get home, I just sort of just went, bop, <laughs> all over. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, so I was expecting to be a bit tired, but not for it to jump on me that but there again, I suppose you are making having to make quite a lot of decisions over the course of the day, and there's probably more decisions than you think there are in Old World, yeah. even a relatively straightforward list to run. There's lots yeah. of decisions to make. Who, who, what order do you make charges in? Who are you shooting? In what, what again? What order? That sort of stuff. Potentially playing a stranger. And you know you've you've got that social element of yeah, and that does take spoons, doesn't it? You know that does that mental effort from people. You know you've got to be on your best behaviour and not acting like a, an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is having a nice game, and everyone did. Like, there was no one who who was uh, misbehaving. Um, it was lovely, and yeah, you got that. Well, then Tom, who came third, um, he's, he always makes me laugh because he he always does this. It's like Every time I wandered up to his game in the first round, he was like, oh, this is so bad. Just effing dwarf gun line. It's just so like, oh, my shag off got shot by this this thing and he rolled a six to wound, just killed it. I'm just like, oh, my God, this flank's falling apart. And every time I wandered back over, he was getting closer and killing more. And the dwarf army was getting smaller and smaller, but his... His rage was getting more and more. Ah, oh, that was just a lucky charge. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> going to finish this game. And then, and then he just, and by the end of it, it's like the dwarf player is basically staring down an unscathed unit of knights and his lord, and then an engineer and just like a whittle block of hammers left. I was like, where's the rest of this dude's army? And he's just like, he's like, oh no no, but Luke, you don't understand the bad luck. I was like, I think, you, I think you've won. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, chill out, bro. Yeah. I think, I think it's fine. And then, he, then he did, and it was just like, yeah. Um, and uh, that, that was that was that's just what he does. And the guy, the, the guy was pretty chilled about it. Like, it was funny. Um, but I, I reckon that's part of his plan. I think he's trying to lull you into a false sense of security, and then boom, he's there. <laughs> mind games, <laughs> Tom. If your name's Tom, you play mind games. <laughs> <laughs> were there any other sort of standout moments for you then, Luke, over the course of the day? Because obviously we were very much wrapped up with our with our own particular games, but you had, I suppose, a view of everything that was going on around yeah. the, around the tables. There's some absolutely hilarious things. Uh, the 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 uh, <laughs> the the, I don't, if you've watched the stream, you, I think if, if you, you should watch the stream with the, the chat with the Bretonian uh, army, 
who played in the second game and just uh, versus the troll player. Um, that whole game is just hilarious. Like I'm not going to repeat it for YouTube, but just the language and the <laughs> and the banter and the his description of he would say a certain thing about Pegasus Knights and it having some sort of double meaning. And um, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it here, but uh, that was hilarious. Uh, I think so I can that, guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carried on um, through the third game as well. Don't, <laughs> <this is surprising. laughs> um, but round, round one, the two, I had various people saying to me, oh, I think this is going to do well. I think this is going to do well. Um, and the two high elf lists that were there, one had one dragon, one had two dragons. And because of uh, the intricacies of fate, and uh, people having to drop, they had to play each other. And they turned up together as well. I was like, guys, I'm really sorry, but obviously you guys have got to play each other. I hope you don't have it. He goes, that's fine, we don't have to play regularly. Um, And they just had this eternal combat between two dragons just bonking each other on the head for like four turns until one of them managed to get a flank charge and then it made the other one fall over. And so that was hilarious. And... (laughs) Then seeing in the third game, that's the, the high elf player that won, who I thought was on a trajectory to win out the event, you know, the double dragon list, um, meeting the wrong end of Monster Slayer by making that gung ho charge into that lone Bretonian Duke, Bretonian Duke or something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, and he just got poked in the eye with a sword and fell over. And then the rest of his game just fell apart from that point on as Bretonians just sort of throw one up over the hill through the wood and just devour the rest of the army so that was great there was a moment again where tom with his chaos his like really tough looking chaos army against orc and goblin opponent um did some magic and used the wild banner to put a unit of pig riders just into a shagoth turn one and so i was just like i don't i don't know what's going on like <laughs> got this orc unit in my face he was just so confused and then he was like trying to pull out all the stops to kill these orcs so they didn't combat Rezzy Shagoth off the table. And uh, he had his knights set up for a flank charge. And he goes, right, I'm going to whittle them down before I get the flank charge in next turn. And he goes, OK, I'll do an assailment into these orc piggies, pig riders, boar riders, and I'll kill a few. And then the guy was like, I was standing and watching and he goes, I can take from either side, can't I, Luke? And I was like, yeah, it's whatever side you want from the rear, you can take from. He goes, cool, I'm going to take from this side. So now those knights no longer have a flank charge. And so I, I just saw Tom's face just then just drop. <laughs> 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 Played um, yourself, Tom. Played yes, yourself. he did indeed. That was a funny moment. And then the poor Chris, the guy with the 600-point Chaos Dragon, was getting absolutely trousered by this Toon King um, uh, a, play, a player who had that like, double dragon, double necro sphinx. So quite a, a good list. Mm-hmm. And slowly and surely, I just kept seeing. I'd come over and be like, "Is it a close game?" Goes, "Yeah, we've got this going on. This going on. It's quite close." And then slowly, the the jaws were tightening around this this chaos army, and there was just like just the dragon left in the middle, and it was in combat with about four or five different units. The game was very clearly in the Toon King's favour. And then this Necro Sphinx just wanders up and just goes, decapitate and strike, and now it's dead. It's like, dude, he's already lost. Like, chill out. Like, you just didn't need to, <laughs> need to do that. He's like, oh, sorry, right. I won't roll a six. It's like, six to hit, six to wound. Oh, you got a ward set. Oh, no, failed that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, buddy. Uh, it was going to be a 20 nil anyway, but now it's definitely a 20 nil. <laughs> got to make it quick. Put them out of the misery, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, hey, he didn't even leave anyone to send a message. That one, that was uh, that was brutal. Um, so I think the other interesting thing as well was the high elf player into the screen list. So round two, um, again, not to not to rub it in things. I think you, you've already kind of covered a correct oh, yeah. way, you know, the technically correct way to do it. And um, I think without a bit of, and also you failed that that awkward charge with the warriors. I would have been very interested to see what that would have happened. If you were just unfortunately hadn't quite got enough time. Yeah. I and I'll tell you something very funny about that charge I failed. Yeah. I forgot how to play the game and I only won, rolled one D six. So I, I'm not sure oh. you know how to play the charge phase having watched it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Why, what did I do wrong on stream? I'll go into it after the fact, mate. You'll laugh right. yourself. 
Okay. So, uh, so yeah, this this final thing, the the, the high off players, then again, he just uh, he just didn't engage for four or five turns on break point, and then realised on the and then said, yeah, on the last turn, I can take three screens, and that's not going to kill enough to break me, and then just jumped and killed as much as he could, and got a very small whim, and that's that was really effective. So the um, screamer list. Uh, as Liam has been sort of talking about, you know, just don't engage with it. And I think in tournaments, he had even said this guy uh, is a very, very amenable chap. But this is a toned down version of the list. He's had a lot of negative feedback playing it. People just genuinely just don't enjoy playing it, mm. which is obviously turning him off to them wanting to bring it to events. So then he's had to kind of think, OK, I'll take a lesser, agree, less egregious version of it. So it's nice to see that narrative kind of play through with a list like that, that it's not just going to turn up and dominate and everyone's just going to be like, mm, um, there's ways to, there's way with, there's ways to deal with it. And there, it's also affecting how people want to then actually even turn up with that list at all. Uh, so, yeah. And the other big takeaway for me is Monster Slayer. Monster Slayer is actually a really interesting leveler. It's not, so reliable that it's broken but it does give you the chance to turn a game on its head or turn a combat on its head give it give something like a dragon pause for thought if it's going to come charging into into combat and stuff so it actually saw a lot of saw a lot of relevance i saw multiple at least three or four games where it was affecting or shaping the game in some way which is really cool so rob turning to you your your view through the eyes of world well, chat uh, on Epic Flail. Yeah. What, what were you seeing? What was your your feel of the of the day? Uh, it was really interesting, actually. Like the chat was good fun. You know, we get, old world has one of those communities where, it, where they don't take yourself too seriously, and I think that's where the chat was throughout the course of the whole day. Um, there were some funny moments. We had some fun discussions. You know, the blowing up of the your. Um, Hell Cannon, the some of the jokes that went on in game two, and then the madness. T- game three, I think they both were so tired, they're just like, I'm going to throw it in the middle and see what happens. So it was good fun, actually, yeah. And I enjoyed it, and, you know. Take a look. That was it, really, you know? Oh, excellent. Um, you got to tell me what I did wrong then, Rob. Oh. Well, do you want to know on here, or do you want to know after the fact? I think it could be a good learning experience. Like, so, if, you're, if you're flustered playing in your first ever tournament, the kind of yeah. mistakes you might make. Well, so I think it was both of you, right? The, the charge phase, you do all the check declarations and then you do the responses after. Okay, there was two separate occasions where he charged you, you responded by fleeing. He then charged you again, you responded by fleeing on the same unit. And then he charged you a third time on the unit of dogs. And you fled off the table nearly. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he'd gone, I'm going to charge you with this unit at the back. The dogs are going to run thingy. And then, and it was like, and it happened on like three turns. And you, he did the same, you did the same thing to him. So he's like, guys, the charge, all the charges at the same time, then all the responses. And it would, I think you'd have lost your dogs on the first one, to be honest. But because he would have overrun, I think his second lot of dogs would have caught you. Yeah. But I think, you know, you'd have been in a much better position because his units would have fled up, been up the board, and you'd have been able to charge him. But because of the way it happened, he didn't really end up going anywhere. Um, yeah. It was just small things like that during the course yeah. of the, the event that you get and, to see it from the outside. And remember to roll both your dice when you're doing yeah. an important charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether that's um, partially a hangover from the old days of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Um, so I certainly found actually on the streamed practice game I did a couple of days before the event against Steve's Dark Elves, um, who did really, he went two and one, he did really well considering he was running Dark Elves and they're one of the really weak factions out there. Um, no, little good. things like large targets, that plus one to hit, um, stuff like that. But yeah, you used to be able to do ordering of charges to try and bait out the stand and shoot reaction, which you can no longer do because you mm. do all the reactions at the end and stuff like that. So it's those little differences which I, I think, as a community, it seems not 
there's an awful lot still to nail down with our knowledge of the rules. Um, Definitely. I think the, uh, so to elaborate on that, a common thing I saw and heard people say and share was they've been playing the same bunch of people. So then when you play against new things, all of a sudden you're seeing new rules and different interactions or new rules to you. And then you're getting that hangover of, okay, it's a fresh set of interactions and you're kind of just playing on what you know from before. So you're constantly trying to break out of that until you're out of that. It's, it's very, that, that bleed over of previous editions is very real. And also <laughs> one thing that one chap said, which I found ringing true, after he said it very very early on in the morning because he overheard a rules discussion i said oh let me just double check and because i wasn't 100 percent confident i just started looking through the rules he was like no it's not he said my little thing is if you find yourself thinking it was like that in eighth or seventh it's just not the case anymore so if you're in a position where you find yourself thinking that 99 percent of the time is wrong and yeah that played out throughout the rest of the tournament i sort of chuckled it and laughed it off i was like yeah good one and I was like, actually, yeah, like all of the questions I was getting were based on, oh, we think it's this. And it's like, no, it's not. It's just that, that hangover. Yeah. It's quite easy as well for your little group to all be playing the same rule wrong because yeah. someone <laughs> explained it confidently and you all went, okay, and no one checked again. And then you go to a tournament and then someone's like, no, it says it says it's like this. It's very true. It's yeah. actually a really good point because I played Rob, I played Mike before I played you, and it was only you that said to me, "Your dragon can march, you idiot." It's only, <laughs> it's only non the stuff without fly, and I was like, "What?" And I'd just been playing that, and obviously, they're not going to question me because they're going to assume I know my own rules, right? <laughs> like the only person that's hurting is me, <laughs> it's like, you know. So I was just like, "No, I'm the authority on this 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 tinking army that I'm playing," and obviously. I just completely played that wrong. And then when we played, you were like, in fact, there was a lot of stuff you were correcting me. So it was a really good game for learning. Because I, yeah, I, because I, I did play, what was the fancy edition with the big red book? Fifth? Sixth? Sixth. Sixth. I, I played sixth yeah, as a kid, but have absolutely no memories of it. So coming into Old World, I have no rules to get confused with the previous edition really so it's been quite good actually i could read the rule book and like have a fresh set of eyes on it nice <laughs> i wish i wish <laughs> <laughs> like, i played competitive like going to warhammer world and like winning events and stuff so i have to i've had to do a complete retake and i think that's probably why i'm struggling with the army i am to be honest um but yeah but having it fresh must be real nice yeah, it's actually made it quite easy to pick up, even though I apparently get it completely wrong. Well, I mean, street. the charge phase you'll learn. <laughs> you know, you're flustered. First thing in the morning, we'll let you off, right? Yeah, exactly. It was, yeah, I only had a small breakfast. Can you blame me? <laughs> but there's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Playing on stream is a challenge as well. Like, yeah. You know, I, I get why people don't always fall in love with the idea. Um, Excellent. So, um, overall, then, it sounds like a swimming success, really. So, thank you very much, Luke, for organising that. Um, good time had by all. Um, be interesting to see if the next one's like that as well, when people are a bit more nailed down with the concepts and what they're doing. Hopefully, because it seems such a nice crowd, it will be. Moving on, though, with the sort of looking forward part of the agenda, we've, as I say, we've come to the end of our pretty intense period of throwing lists together and trying to work out what on earth we're doing with the game um now with the, the pressure off a little bit we don't have the uh the targets that we had before um again starting with you tim and going around what what are your plans with the game now going forward um i easily the best thing in my entire list is a level four sorcerer with battle magic so I want another one and I might put it on a dragon or I might the demonic mount is actually amazing because it it moves eight it's a skirmisher because it's not a large mount so it can move in it can move and shoot in any direction and with the battle magic move twice 
spell, you can go 16 inches and still fire spells. So I actually really like Demonic Mount. So I might do two of those. I might do a dragon, not sure. But that's the only thing I really want to add to this Warriors of Chaos list. Um, take the Hell Cannon out, obviously. Um, and then I'm already thinking about another army. I think I want to do... It will be Orcs and Goblins either way. And I want to do absolutely no Games Workshop miniatures. So I'm either thinking a troll-based army, because there's a million good 3D-printed trolls you can get, or I found this um, warp miniatures have a, a, an army of little gnomes in red hats with beards, and it, basically it's a proxy army for goblins, so they've got netters, they've got wolf riders, but they're on frogs, they've got a troll hag, but it's a giant frog with a bunch of gnomes on it. It's, they've got a giant, but it's just like 200 gnomes standing on each other's shoulders. <laughs> oh, I, want I want this army. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if, if, if I can share my screen, I've got... Um, this I've got is... A... I'm on the gnome train, man. Oh, yes. <laughs> we see that. So that's like a battle pack you can get. Um, How much is that? That's 60 quid. Fair. Is it three D print by the look of it? it? Does look like it. Yeah, that's uh, th that's so sixty quid for the printed uh, that pack. But then look, they've got there's a, gi a giant that's just gnomes stood on his <coughs> shoulders. There's a pump wagon. Um, See, I've got little nets as well on fanatics. They really thought about this. Yeah, and then a little oh, catapult. <laughs> I know what my next army yeah. is. I'm sorted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Stealing this. F in go, let's go gnomes. Um, <laughs> you you know I have a thing for gnomes, man. So <laughs> yeah, look, that's, it's, this is a I I tried to describe this to you in the in the one of the streams the other day, but I couldn't remember exactly what it was. You have to pin me that those links over. Yeah, after the patch, I'll like, send. Yeah, I'll send it to you. So. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking next. Some kind of stupid orc and goblins list with no games workshop miniatures. I think that'll be fun. Yeah. So yeah, in interesting you talk about orcs and goblins because my uh, not my next army. I'm also going to go with orcs and goblins, although I'm going in a completely opposite direction um, to the one you were just describing, Tim. In that I know there was some chat about trying to get to Warhammer World and stuff like that. Um, and bearing in mind my Empire Force has about three Games Workshop figures in it, um, huh. I was thinking I could probably do with something that if we are going to do that sort of next year or something, it would be good to actually have an army that I can actually take to Warhammer World. Nice. Um, so I'm probably going to do, try and, well, my aim will be to use all Warhammer figures for that force if I can. So I've got some ball boys and there's going to be, but I'm going to try and do it a bit more narratively. Um, and what I really want is a more active play style list. So I did find with my empire, the more I tinkered with it and the more I felt like I've just got to put more guns in it, more guns, more guns. Mm. It becomes very much a sit back, sort of counter punch, hide behind a jab sort of force. And I want to be actually shove models across the table and see what happens and be yeah. a bit more aggressive. Um, so hopefully Orcs will let me do that and also bring in a bit of comedy like relief as we go as well um, because it's not an army you can take too seriously so the next part of the year for me I think is going to be very green um, I do want to make it was one of my new year's war games resolutions was to get a thousand points of imperial guard done so I do want to try and get on to that um, but in our league down at the club for 40k i'm going to refocus a bit now and actually try and remember how to play 40k after playing mostly warhammer for the first part of the year um and i'm probably going to take orcs for that as well so there's going to be a lot of green in my in my future i think over the next next few months yeah, um nice. but yeah should be a bit of an interesting change of pace and see how see how we get on um yeah, so Luke, you, what are your plans for the, for the rest of the year when it comes to all things Warhammer? I'm going to finish off on the, these Tomb Kings. 
Uh, so I got a decent chunk done, but not a full 2,000 points. And I'm going to work away on those. And then when they're done, I'll be focusing on my own Warriors of Chaos. And I've been using the Slaves of Darkness models for those. Um, I thought about getting the old school stuff, but actually the the new Sigmar miniatures for Warriors are just insane. And so I'm... As as difficult it is, is is to actually rank them all together sometimes with the awesome size of them. Um, I'm gonna just yeah get on, get on that and just use those. I've got a couple of classic minis. I bought a Games Day mini and I've got the old school sorcerer metal sorcerer on Steed as well. Um, so there's it's got a smattering of some old stuff on there. So that's gonna be a real labour of love. But I'm gonna be really disciplined and get the Tomb Kings that I've done. I've got all built um, because they won't take long to do. It's just, it's just getting me able to do it. Um, and I'm tempted with the 40k league at the King and Queen. Tempted to um, bring guard to it. Now that um, I changed the guard special rules to be a lot less sit at the back and fire artillery and have a few key units running around. Um, so I'm going to tinker with that a little bit. Maybe GSC. Um, not sure. Got a lot of choice with 40k, so I, I'm flitting around. I'm undecided at the moment. But yeah, gonna the main focus the rest of the year is, is Team Kings, Team Kings, Team Kings still. They're a really fun army. Um, I enjoyed using Tomb Scorpions in the last games that I had. They're really effective. Um, and yeah, just, just enjoying learning kind of what the limitations are and continuing to just get better with them basically excellent and nice. rob over to you what are your plans and i think you also promised us some exciting news as well yeah so it's been no secret i've hated my old world army i painted it i just, I just even now i haven't had a game with this fully painted army and i really don't want to um so yeah well, my news obviously i've actually started and i'll show you my first, my dragon so this is this is my dragon yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we, we've we've got i think we've got 1900 points of deepkin uh that we're going to do a sea themed based high elf army because they're already elves and so i think hope i'm hoping you know linking back to your warhammer trip I'll be able to take my Deepkin High Elves to go up there. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think we've got a game at the weekend, um, Tim. Yeah. Is it this I can't remember which one. Is this yeah. weekend or next weekend? Yeah, but, this weekend. Uh, I am really looking forward to actually play World, Old World again. You know, I think I've been kind of, I'm, I'm not interested when in the chat. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get involved. Now I'm back on the train. So. Excellent. Yes, and there may be a gnome army on the horizon. If you know, if I can sell my dwarf army and get someone to 3D print the rest of those for me, <laughs> we could end up with a gnome. I don't know if I'll use them as orcs and goblins. I'm honestly not sure, but gnomes is gnomes, right? And yeah, uh, I think the big thing for me, other than that, is the we've got a blood bowl league, which is where the gnome thing comes in. Yeah, nice. I have a team of affectionately known as the Honey Badgers, and I'm looking forward to play them. So, yeah, I don't I know if I would put affectionate and Honey Badger in the same sentence, mate. <laughs> you, you you need a Blood Bowl team before you can understand the fun. They're basically stunty, so they're like D tier in any other game, right? Right. But the, these guys are all about punching above their weight. That's the whole <laughs> thing of it. So they're like pick fights when you really shouldn't. And <laughs> Honey Badger seems appropriate. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I'm getting involved in this Blood Bowl League as well. I've just bought the Nurgle kit. I can paint it exactly like I paint my old world army. It'll take me a weekend. Um, yeah, very excited for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm also uh, quite interested in getting onto that. Um, as long as it doesn't might be something it depends on timings because the league yeah. thing for 40k as well um I, I'm quite mindful I've, i may have some some changes coming up fairly soon which will affect my ability to play regularly so i won't know till august how that's going to pan out 
Yeah. Um, but I think I've got an orc team, yet more orcs, um, floating around at somewhere that I just need to finish off painting. So, ho- yeah, hopefully I'll be able to um, knock those out and get something out onto the field. Um, yeah. Might That's even make cool. some Blood Bowl videos, who knows? Yeah, do it. Yeah, there's not a lot of Blood Bowl content on YouTube, so it'd be good to get some more of it. I'll play the gnomes anytime. <laughs> <laughs> They're up for any fight. Cool. So, yeah, I, it sounds like quite a range of interesting and some quite imaginative things to come forward. So that that's going to be quite good, I think. Um, I f- suspect, well, I think there's something in the books now, at the, the, an event down at the King and Queen for Warhammer Old World later in the year. Um, I think Pete's organising something, so it would be good to see a few local tournaments starting to pick up. Um, there definitely seems to be a bit of a local community starting to establish itself, um, which is pretty good. So, yeah, I think as a final thank you from me for taking part in this project over the last six months. I found it really interesting, if a bit intense at times, um, putting an army together in such short order, um, which I think is part of the reason why I'm so keen to move on to something other than finishing off the dregs of the Empire stuff that never took to the field, because I'm just kind of done with them now after focusing so much on them for six months. Um, <laughs> I'll try and get them done at some point so they're not just in the pile of shame. But yeah, thank you very much, guys, for taking part. I do appreciate all the time you put into it and for taking part in these calls as well. Um, thank you for putting it on, man. To do yeah, some stuff nice again one. in the future. It's been a pleasure. And like, like with having a tournament. So there we have it. The project has come to a reasonably successful conclusion. I'd really like to just take an extra moment to thank Paul, Liam, Tim, Luke and Rob for taking part. I appreciate not everyone was on the call today and it has been one of the challenges throughout this series, really getting everyone to be available at the same time to take part in the catch-up course. Because real life takes its toll. Overall, I think the project's been fairly successful. We were able to get to the event, we had painted 2,000 point armies, and we met our personal objectives. But now it's time to look towards the future, and at the moment there's no definitive plans to put any more projects such as this onto the channel. But I know that there are people out there who have particularly enjoyed this. So what I would ask is if there's anything around this sort of thing you'd like to see, do let me know down in the comments below. Maybe it's another collection project, a collaborative effort. Maybe you'd like to see some campaign type stuff, more regular battle reports. Do let me know down in the comments below. Aside from that, thank you very much for watching both this video and the others in this series. It's been a really interesting project to be involved in and to, to run. I'm looking forward to seeing what further ideas we can dream up down in the future. So once again, thank you very much for listening. I am Return to the Old World. Have a great day.